Welcome to the Health Hub. In today's video, we are going to talk about the benefits of raw versus cooked vegetables. Is it better to consume your vegetables cooked or raw? Now to understand that question, we have to first understand what's in a vegetable. How does it benefit us? Vegetables are rich in essential nutrients such as folate, vitamin C, and beta-carotene, which is a precursor to vitamin A. While beta-carotene doesn't directly convert to a significant amount of active retinol, it still offers health benefits. When comparing vitamins from plant-based and animal-based sources, animal-based vitamins are generally more bioavailable. However, vegetables like spinach provide iron, although the iron in red meat is more easily absorbed by the body. Despite animal products having higher bioavailability for most vitamins, plant sources excel in providing vitamin C, folate, beta-carotene, and vitamin E. Additionally, vegetables are valuable sources of essential minerals, particularly potassium and magnesium. Magnesium is at the heart of the chlorophyll molecule, and that's the green stuff in the plant. So anything green that you eat has a good amount of magnesium but we also need potassium. Indeed, there are other minerals in plants, including trace minerals. The mineral content of plants can vary depending on how they are grown. For example, if plants are grown hydroponically in a water solution, they may contain around 15 minerals present in that solution. However, soil-grown plants can have a broader spectrum of minerals. Yet, if the soil lacks beneficial microbes and biology, chances are they're going to be pretty low in minerals. What about amino acids and protein? Plants generally contain less protein compared to animal products. However, they still provide essential amino acids necessary for our bodies. What about fat? Plants are typically low in fat content compared to animal sources. However, they do provide essential fatty acids like omega-3 and omega-6. What about fiber? Vegetables are rich in fiber, which is essential for digestive health and feeding our gut microbes. So basically, if you eat vegetables, and you're eating a wider range of vegetables, with different fibers, compared to someone who doesn't consume any vegetables, you're going to have more diverse microbiome. And what does microbiome do? As they make all sorts of things for you. They make vitamins, they make biotin. They make other B vitamins, they make vitamin K, they actually help you make bile. They help you make B12 available. But here's something that you definitely get that you normally don't get from other types of foods and that would be phytonutrients. So we're talking about antioxidants, which are plant-based chemicals known for their diverse properties, from anti-inflammatory effects to cancer-fighting abilities. There are thousands of these phytochemicals, it's like a mini natural drugstore within plants. Because they create all sorts of very, very cool effects. For instance, compounds like lutein and zeaxanthin are crucial for night vision and preventing macular degeneration. Additionally, antioxidants help protect against the complications of chronic diseases and even shield the skin from UV radiation to reduce the risk of skin cancer. And this is something you probably have never heard of before. Plants contain a very good amount of probiotics, which are beneficial bacteria and microbes found within them. In just one cup of vegetables, you can find around 100 million microbes. When you consume vegetables grown in soil, you're getting even more probiotics because soil acts as a medium that enhances the microbiome. Plants acquire these microbes from the soil, so the roots of the plant actually eat microbes as their primary nutrient source, and they're extracting minerals from it. These microbes contribute to the overall probiotic content of the plant. It's been recently discovered that raw vegetables contain microbes, making them an unexpected source of probiotics. This challenges the previous assumption that plants were sterile. However, these microbes are destroyed by heat, so cooking vegetables reduces their probiotic potential. Organic vegetables have about 40% more microbes and greater diversity compared to conventional ones, making organic produce better. These microbes in plants can significantly change your gut microbiome and survive in the stomach, likely protected by fiber, and released in the lower digestive tract. If you have conditions like celiac disease, diverticulitis, or gut inflammation, you may not tolerate certain microbes in vegetables well, as they can stimulate your immune system and worsen inflammation. This is why if you consume vegetables and you feel worse, or you get extreme bloating, in such cases, 
a carnivore diet might be more suitable initially. However, severe incidents like Salmonella or E. coli contamination in plants are rare. Healthy plants usually host friendly microbes that help suppress pathogens and support the plant's immune system. Another interesting point is that fermented vegetables, such as sauerkraut and kefir, contain microbes that closely resemble those found in your own gut microbiome. This means that if your digestion is compromised, you may benefit more from consuming fermented vegetables, or perhaps even avoiding vegetables altogether, or opting for more cooked vegetables. This is because cooking breaks down food, making it easier to absorb and digest. What about the effect of heat on vitamins? Well, you are going to lower vitamin C and you are going to destroy a lot of the vitamins and enzymes. What about minerals? Well, it depends if you are steaming them versus boiling them. A lot of times when you boil vegetables and you see all the green in the solution, you're basically leaching out chlorophyll and you're leaching out minerals, but if you slightly steam or saute your vegetables, you're not going to lose the mineral part, you might lose some of the vitamins, depending on the duration and the heat and the temperature. When it comes to phytonutrients, there's some intriguing data suggesting that certain cooking methods, like steaming or sautéing, may increase their availability. However, the research is inconsistent. Some studies show a potential increase of up to 18%, while others indicate a decrease of around 6%. This variability is due to the multitude of phytonutrients and other factors involved. Cooking can also kill microbes in plants, so consuming some vegetables raw is beneficial. However, certain vegetables like Brussels sprouts, broccoli, and cauliflower may be better cooked. It's generally advisable to consume a mix of raw and cooked vegetables, as frying vegetables can significantly reduce their nutrient content. Are there risks with eating raw vegetables? Raw vegetables should always be washed before eating, to lower the risk of food poisoning from harmful germs. Vegetable sprouts are particularly susceptible to germs, because they need a warm, humid environment to grow, and that's just the environment that germs like, too. For people with lower immunity, who are at great risk of infections, it might be safer to cook vegetables rather than to consume them raw. Otherwise, for most people, raw vegetables are an excellent source of vitamins, minerals, and fiber and can be a part of healthy eating habits. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful please like, share and subscribe for more such inspired content.